Uh, hello again. So uh, today's practical is called uh, temperature changes. All sorts of chemical reactions cause a change in temperature, uh, reacting acids with metals, reacting acids with um, a base or soluble bases, alkalis and neutralisation reactions, reacting acids with carbonates, uh, displacement reactions can be uh, quite violently exothermic and give out a lot of heat. So. Uh, it's an important thing and we're going to study it and collect some data and analyse it using graphs and lines of best fit. And today we're going to specifically be neutralising an acid with an alkali. Uh, and we're going to be using the following things. So um, we're going to be using an acid. I've got two molar hydrochloric acid. Um, that's an irritant, um, but it's still pretty strong. So, um, well, it's an irritant, so you have to mop up any spills or if you get any on your hands, uh, rinse it under the tap straight away. Um, we're also going to be neutralizing that with an alkali. I've got a pretty strong one here, hence the corrosive label, it's 2 molar sodium hydroxide, you may or may not be using one uh, that strong. We're only adding small amounts at a time and we're going to be adding them to a polystyrene cup inside a beaker to make it extra stable so we don't knock anything over with a polystyrene lid and a thermometer hole which is a big clue for the fact that we're going to need a thermometer so we're going to use quite a long one about 30 centimetres long and that is uh, good for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is easier to make take readings because the temperature changes that we record in chemistry can be uh, quite small. And secondly, uh, because it's long, uh, the bulk of it pokes out of the lid. So, as you can see, a reading of 20 degrees, which is what the room is at the moment and probably what the solutions will start off at is already visible. So we don't need to lift it out. Don't lift your thermometer out when taking a reading because then you're not no longer measuring the temperature of the solution. We're also going to you're going to need um, some measuring cylinders. It's always nice if you've got two different size measuring cylinders to use for two different chemicals, and that way you don't get confused. We'll be using the large um, 50 mil measuring cylinder for the acid, and we're going to be using the small one for the sodium hydroxide, so keep them next to each other, the measuring cylinder and the acid and the measuring cylinder and the alkali. Uh, and also I'm just going to use a couple of um, pouring beakers just to pour the acid into and then pour that into the measuring cylinder, that's far easier. You'll see what I do there. Anyway. Okay. Okay, you've got a method to follow which is very nice of them and uh, so we will follow that uh, as we go. Step one, use the large measuring cylinder to put 30 centimetres cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid into the polystyrene cup. Okay, 30 mils of dilute acid. Put the lid back on. Scratch down until the graduations line up either side. Done. Pour that into a polystyrene cup and stand the cup inside the beaker. Put that back next to my acid. Use the thermometer to measure the temperature of the acid, record it in the first blank column of the table on the back of this sheet. Cup, thermometer lid. The downside of using long ones is they are a little bit tippy. Okay. Give it a little stir so that we know. Have a look, is the temperature changing? No. 
22. Okay. Step four, measure five centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide solution into the small measuring cylinder. And then it says, pour the sodium in the hydroxide into the cup, quickly fit the lid and gently stir the solution with the thermometer through the hole. When the reading of the thermometer stops changing, write down the temperature in the next space. When you're using these 10 mil measuring cylinders, just remember they go up in twos. So that means it goes past the first big line, past the second big line, and 10 is halfway, sorry, five is halfway to the third big line. So add it. Stir and look for a temperature change. So we've already had a temperature change. I can see it changing. I can see it changing. Still changing. Last chance to change, it seems to have stopped. It stopped. Repeat steps four and five and add further five centimetre cubed portions of sodium hydroxide to the cup until a total of 40 centimetres has been added. And it says here, the last few additions should produce a temperature fall rather than a rise. Two, four, I can see the temperature rise. I can see the temperature rise. Yeah. Slowing down. Is it going to make it? Okay, um, right, so we've successfully taken the readings that we needed to uh, take of the temperature after adding five centimetres cubed each time, and as expected, it, the temperature did uh, decrease uh, towards the end after peaking. Um, you're going to have to repeat that and get a second set of results and then calculate a mean. So this is one of those occasions where you're just going to add together two numbers and divide by two. So don't uh, divide by three because that's what we normally do. Okay, that's it from me. Good luck with the practical.